We had a documented case where a particular product moved six kilometers. Basically, it was applied at high noon, and because of the thermal effect of the sun, it was a hot, sunny day, and the product just moved on the thermals uh, that distance. I think everyone thinks we have to have 100% control. We don't need 100% control to get maximum efficiency or max maximum production out of a crop. I think the sprayer today has to be better educated, uh, has to read and understand the label, and I think has to have a good understanding of uh, weather conditions as, as to how they affect droplets and droplet movement. These chemicals are very valuable and we want to make maximum use of the dollars that we do put into them and reducing drift is one way of doing it. Farmers in Ontario use pesticides to control pests that injure or damage their crops. The application of pesticides presents many challenges, not the least of which is spray drift. Spraying under the wrong conditions, on hot, windy days, for example, farmers have been known to lose up to a quarter of their spray mix. You often can't see spray drift, but it is there, and it can travel a long, long way. It can also affect your personal safety and the safety of innocent bystanders. This operator has $400 worth of spray mix on board. By the time his tank is empty, $100 of it will have traveled somewhere, somewhere other than to the intended target. Drift is always possible when you are applying pesticides in the form of droplets. The amount of drift depends on many factors, some of which you can control. Coarse sprays are only slightly affected by the wind and usually land where they are supposed to land. A fine spray has less downward momentum, remains suspended in the air for a long time and will land some distance away if it lands at all. There are many things you can do to help reduce spray drift. Another kind of drift is vapor drift. Vapor drift is the movement of vapors produced as a result of the volatilization or evaporation of the pesticide. Reducing vapor drift can be a little more challenging. Uh, vapor drift is a little more difficult to control because uh, it occurs when the pesticides evaporate into a gas. Those gases are lighter than air and they move with wind. You can't see vapors, you can see the effect of vapors after the damage has been done, but you cannot see vapors moving uh, off the target. So from the seat or uh, beside the sprayer, you couldn't see those vapors leaving. The amount of vapor drift is product dependent, but again, you, the operator, have choices of which product to use. Generally, it comes down to the fact that the farmer was not aware of uh, the weather conditions, uh, wind or the possibility of, say, vapor drift after the time of application. Maybe he didn't uh, check uh, the temperature uh, forecast for later in the day. He may have applied it in the morning when it was cool, but the temperatures may have risen in the day to the critical period or to the critical temperature where uh, vapor drift could occur. This is very common in, in, our, in the cases of the uh, um, broadleaf weed herbicide that, that would vaporize. Drift can have many nasty consequences. In certain circumstances, it can damage off-target sites. Crop injury and yield loss to a neighbor's crop often leads to expensive litigation. The mechanisms are in place for dealing with drift problems, but we'd certainly love not to have to have to go out in the field and, and, uh, and be involved in this because it, it is really kind of upsetting for the farmers, the parties involved. It, it creates strains in relationships between neighbors and it's, 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 it's really quite desirable that they be reduced to a minimum. In addition to the potential for damaging a neighbor's crop, drift can leave your own crop unprotected against pests. 
depending on how much product floats away, drift can result in a lower than intended application rate, which may reduce the effectiveness of the product. This can result in poor or no pest control, which is a terrible waste of money. It is also possible for drift to damage other sensitive crops on your own farm. Spray drift can also cause serious environmental damage, especially to nearby water resources, and possibly lead to illegal pesticide residues. Good pesticide stewardship is, is necessary for a number of reasons. You, you mentioned the economic reason, you know, we, these chemicals are very valuable and we want to make maximum use of the dollars that we do put into them and reducing drift is one way of doing it. Before we can understand how to reduce spray drift, we need to learn a little bit about how droplets behave once they leave the spray nozzle. In fact, there are many forces acting on spray droplets which can cause them to misbehave, resulting in a variety of unfortunate consequences. The forces that affect a droplet in its journey from the nozzle to the target don't affect all droplet sizes to the same degree. Some of those forces are working against you and some are working for you. As the spray liquid is forced through the nozzle, it is broken up into droplets. Because the liquid is pushed out of the nozzle under pressure, some downward momentum is given to the droplets. In addition, gravity is also pulling droplets downward. Wind works against these forces, keeping droplets from landing where they're supposed to land. What many people don't realize is that the travel speed of the sprayer also appears as a wind effect to the droplet. This may add to or subtract from wind speed. Hot, dry weather conditions will speed up the evaporation of the droplet. Large droplets will become smaller and more susceptible to wind. Small droplets evaporate even quicker than large droplets because they have more surface area. As droplets fall, the friction with the air, or drag, will tend to slow the droplet's descent, just as a parachute slows the descent of a sky jumper. For larger droplets, drag is not significant. With small droplets, those that have a diameter no bigger than a human hair, the lifting effect, or drag, equals or exceeds downward momentum and gravity combined. The result? These fine droplets become buoyant in the air, and they travel with the air currents. When soil is warmer than air, warm air will rise, further slowing the droplet down, leaving it vulnerable to air currents for a longer period of time. It is this same principle that allows hot air balloons to drift for miles. And like spray droplets, these sometimes land where they're not supposed to. So when it comes to spray drift, these are your enemies. Wind, travel speed, evaporation, drag, and rising hot air. Dealing with these enemies really isn't as difficult as you might think.